Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to our webinar. I'll introduce myself. I'm Joy Hawkins, the owner, founder of Sterling Sky, Local U, and the Local Search Forum. And with me here today, we have Roger Wakefield. I'm going to let him introduce himself, but um, I learned about Roger as basically a famous YouTuber who started as a plumber, uh, which really fascinated me because we work with a lot of home service businesses. And I really wanted to know how a local business could really make use of YouTube. So Roger, why don't you tell everyone a little bit about yourself? Uh, what made you decide on, you know, going full tilt on YouTube strategies and um, made you get interested in it? Well, like, like you said, I'm a plumber. Uh, when I speak on stages, I walk out and introduce myself and tell people, look, I'm Roger Wakefield. I'm just a plumber. And I really am. I have no training in advertising, marketing, or anything at all like that. But I had spent $47,000 to make the marketing work, and it actually made my phone quit ringing. Hmm. So when that happened, I decided I wanted to do something about it. And I didn't want to have to study marketing and websites and SEO. And so instead, what I did is I decided I was going to study social media. And I went to a conference f just over five years ago. And I remember walking in the wrong room. Remember at the time, Joy, I'm 54 years old. So I, I'm old for social media age. I'm walking down the corridor. And of course, I go to a social media conference. So at the age of 54, I'm thinking I'm going to learn more about Facebook because that's what social media is. And I walked into a room because I saw a placard out front that said, get in front of your customers using video. And I walked in, I sat down and the guy walks out and he's one of the very first things he says is YouTube is the second largest search engine in the world. And I literally, I shut my notebook. I thought this guy has no idea what he's talking about. YouTube is just where I store my videos. And I turned around to get up and leave. And I noticed the room was full. People were standing along the back walls. So I turned back around in time to hear him say, and it's owned by Google, the largest search engine in the world. And I thought, okay, wait, why don't I know stuff like this? So over the next 45 minutes, I took about three pages worth of notes. And that's where my journey on YouTube started. So, so share with our audience who aren't familiar with you. Like, I want them to understand why they should listen to you. So can you share some stats about your YouTube channel? Like, you know, consider this your bragging session. Tell us uh, basically how many subscribers do you have? Um, what what is, what awesome uh, things have you accomplished on YouTube? You, you know, and, and here's what you say is, why should they listen to me? And the first thing I thought is it's not because of the numbers. Okay. I've, I've got 565,000 followers on YouTube. I've got almost 600,000 on TikTok. But it's not because of the numbers, because that's not what got me the numbers. What got me the numbers is delivering value, being consistent, and continuously studying and learning about what I'm doing. Uh, you, you say, why should people follow me? Go to YouTube. If you're watching right now, open up another tab and just go to YouTube and search plumbing. Joy, you're all about SEO. Mm -hmm they can go to YouTube and search plumbing and they're going to find me. That is SEO working at its finest. Yeah. That's, that's incredible. Like that's, that's, that's not a hard term I would say to rank for, right? It's pretty generic. Oh, it's a, uh, it's, it's a hard one to own. Yes. And in pay-per-click, as you know, that's an expensive word. Really that, that's a, that's a high dollar click right there. But if you go to YouTube, I own it. So, so let's talk about this because there's a local business. This is like the challenge that I usually hear from small businesses. So you're, you're in Dallas, you can't serve, you know, all the people that are watching your videos, right? So yeah. when you're a local business and your audience, you know, is let's say 20 miles away, how in the world do you target those people? Because it's simple on Google, right? You type in plumber on Google, you get what we call local results. You get results from businesses in Dallas. And how does that work on YouTube? Like when somebody types in plumber, are they getting localized results or are you just literally reaching the entire U.S.? And how does that help you as a small business or a local uh, it, business? I, and I am reaching not just the entire U.S., the entire world. Uh, you know, I, I, I do this on stages and, and I do this on webinars that, that are all around the world. 
And I mean, I get people say, wait, I'm in Australia. I just found him. <laughs> uh, so it, it is, it, it's, it's bigger. Look, if I were paying for the, the reach of the advertising, I'd be wasting a lot of money because those aren't my customers. I get it. But, but think about what this does, Joy. The literal fact that I'm found around the world as plumbing or plumber. Whenever we first started this, I always had a banner up over the back that said, Hey, Texas Green Plumbing. That was my company. That built up our domain authority <laughs> because people would go in and search Texas Green Plumbing or search plumbing and go to Texas Green Plumbing. And, you know, the, the more people you get on your site, the more traffic you get, the, the longer they're there, all the fun things, your, your domain authority goes up. It's, it becomes a big deal. And what that does for a local company, my marketing team, I, of course, I've, I kept looking around, finally found somebody different. And he sent me a text one day, it says, and it showed Dallas, Texas plumbing. Now you're an SEO. That's going to be one hard to get organically, especially at the time I was a million dollar a year company. My competitors were 80 and a hundred million a year. Wow. And I'm coming up above both of them. Hmm. So, okay. I'm going to unpack that a little because it's interesting. I didn't quite expect this conversation to go this way, but now I'm interested because you're talking about SEO. So when you first started getting, you know, YouTube famous, um, how, at what point did you start noticing increases in like traffic from Google? Like, you know, do you, was it at the 10,000 subscriber mark, 20,000? Like how big do you have to get before you noticed it actually impacting how you showed up on Google? You know, again, and, and uh, the numbers to, to me are hard to look at like that because I understand Followers is a vanity metrics. It is. But, but we, 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 we always, we looked at our view. We looked at our average view duration. We looked at our click through rate, but I would say probably around 10,000 subscribers at That's a thousand, at, at a thousand, we started realizing, Hey, something's working here, but let's, <laughs> let's keep doing what we're doing at 10,000. We started getting big enough that, you know, I'd go out to a restaurant and I'd get recognized. Uh, I'd have people call the office and say, Hey, we're in North Carolina. We want Roger to come out and work on our plumbing. And it's like, <laughs> well, Roger doesn't serve North Carolina. You probably can't afford me to come there, yeah. but, but, but I, we'd still get those calls all the day. So, you know, we noticed it in our business through the, the Google results, because literally whenever I walked in that conference, joy, we were spending about four to $5,000 a month on Google pay-per-click. In a year or two, Google was sending me that kind of money and we quit doing pay-per-click. <laughs> it's 100% organic. Nice to flip that on them. That's not a, a chance I hear many business owners getting. <laughs> I know. When, when I tell people that, it, I mean, think about it. I've only been doing this five years. And, you know, the reason I start out talking and say, look, I'm Roger Wakefield. I'm just a plumber. I'm a plumber that walked in and started learning how to do this. And you're going to have a ton of people watching this that, that have a lot more of an education than I do, especially when it comes to marketing, advertising, and things like that. I'm literally just a plumber. I did not go to college. I did not study marketing or advertising. I walked in and listened to the people talk about YouTube and watched other people on YouTube and thought, you know, in the beginning, it's, it's like, Hey, I want to do that. Then it's like, wait, I can do that better because of what I'm learning. And then you start looking at, you're like, okay, I, I want to be one of the best. And I think that if we all walk in with that mindset, we, we have the opportunity to do whatever we want to do. Yeah. Well, let's, let's talk about how a small business and I'm going to say small business, local business, we're talking obviously like, you know, the, the plumbers of the world, the lawyers, the people that don't, you know, can't service the entire country or globally. Mm -hmm. Um, so how do you make money off of YouTube as a strategy? So obviously you mentioned like there's the SEO benefit, which I think a lot of people don't realize. Um, but what about like leads and stuff? You know, when you started publishing videos and you were first new at this, did you actually get people in Dallas that would hire you as a plumber? Like, did it drive leads? Or were you getting, you know, millions of people all over the country that were contacting you like the guy in North Carolina? Um, and, or is it more about the ad revenue? Like how to, how do you justify all the time and effort that went into creating that channel? Well, and it, you know, justifying is the, the tough part because I was, I was hiring people through the plumbing company to do social media. Uh, my, my very first editor and, and who helped me put it all together was my, my stepson. 
and God bless him. He hated editing. <laughs> so once we got big enough, the first thing that we could hire was an editor, which, which was great. But I remember walking out of the office one day and we had probably just gone over 10,000 subscribers. And I remember walking out of the office one day and, and Amber, who's my assistant now was the office manager then. And she looked up at me and she says, you realize we've got three slab lake jobs that we're doing today from YouTube. Hmm. And I'm like, wait, what do you mean we're doing them today? We can't get them today, do them today because of YouTube. She said, no, no, the calls came in last week. We looked at them, we located them, we did this and that. We're actually starting them today. And I mean, jobs like that are 5,000 to a hundred thousand dollar jobs. And we've got three of them going on at the same time. And they all came in off YouTube. Hmm. Now, when you're growing on YouTube like that, when, when, when you're playing the SEO game, you're, 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 you're working with the algorithm, you're doing what you do. I remember going to a house one day here in Wiley. Uh, our company was in Richardson at the time, closer to Dallas. And. I remember going to video and I climbed out and I look up and the homeowners there and you know, man, he's smiling from ear to ear. He says, Roger, I cannot wait to meet you. He says, I feel like I know you. I've watched you on YouTube. He said, can I tell you why I called your company? I said, yes, sir. I'd, I'd love to know. He says, you made a video saying I'm not the cheapest plumber in town. Matter of fact, I'm probably closer to the more expensive than the cheapest. But here's why I have the best people. I use the best materials. We're going to do it right. Every time we're under, under your house, every time we're there blew his mind <laughs> because he thought after watching that video, I told myself, I don't want the cheapest plumber. I want the best. So, sure. I mean, think about that. That's, that's your message to deliver. Yeah. So well, well, I guess we'll talk about the the ad revenue in a bit. But as far as like getting started, um, what do you need? Like, how much of a time investment are we talking here? How much of a, a dollar investment are we talking? Like, do you need you know fancy equipment? Do you need to hire YouTube coaches? Like, if there's a small business listening right now that has no YouTube presence and they're looking to get started, what should they really expect as far as like how much effort they're going to need to put into it? Well, the the good thing is that if you've got one of these, <laughs> you've got everything you need to get started. Uh, we literally started videoing out in the field with our phones and our iPads. We, my very first videos on YouTube were with a laptop computer sitting at my desk and I was scooting far enough away that I could be framed in it the way I wanted. And then talking really loud. Cause I realized the microphone was like four feet away and that's what I started with. And the thing is just get started. If any business owner out there, and they may say, look, I don't want to get started on YouTube. That's too big. Okay. Start on Facebook, start building a community, start letting people know why you do what you do. And it literally, it does. It starts that quick and that easy. So as far as YouTube goes, is there a different strategy you use? Like, can we talk a little bit about some of the the things that really make your videos perform better? Is it, is it the thumbnail? Is it the title? Is it the description? Like what things should you really be looking at um, to figure out like how to make your videos perform better? Your, your titles and your thumbnails are, are the first two things. Uh, I, I, I'm going to say title. Everybody else will tell you thumbnail because thumbnail, when you're scrolling through a, a thumbnail is like a stop sign. That's the thing that when people see it's going to make them stop. And I agree with that hundred percent. But going back to what you said a while ago, me being a local company, I would do slab leak detection in Richardson, Texas, or in Dallas, Texas. So now people searching on YouTube, if they're using long tail keywords like that and putting in a, in a whole sentence, which is the way we talk to our phones, it's the way that if I'm sitting here typing, you know, I'm going to put in whatever I'm thinking. So we started doing that and it did it. It started making the phone ring quickly and that started leading to more views. So it's just, it feeds back and forth. And as far as like how much, how many videos did you find that you had to publish? I've heard some people say like, don't even talk to me until you make a hundred videos. Uh, you're not going to see anything until, you know, that benchmark. Was there a certain number of videos where you actually started to see, Oh, like I'm starting to actually see results from this. 
um, yeah. uh, to be honest, we, we probably saw results w within just a few months. Okay. Maybe not a lot of results, but just enough to say, hey, you know what? Th th this is actually working. The cool thing about it is in about two years later, I guess, we literally exploded. I mean, I remember when we hit our 100,000 because I, I applied for my, my silver play button. And I remember when that happened, because by the time it came in, we were already over 200,000 and, and it doesn't take them long to get it to you. I promise. <laughs> uh, it just, we went through a phase where all of a sudden YouTube was loving what we were doing. They were putting it out to everybody and we were making great thumbnails, doing great titles. So we were getting clicks and joy. I could, I could sit down at lunch and, and I'd pick up my phone and like, get this look on my face and somebody say like, what? It's like, well, we just got 2000 subscribers. <laughs> it's like today. It's like, no, since we sat down for lunch and it, it blew up, it got crazy. That's nuts. When you were, so that those initial stages, that, that first three months, what, what frequency were you publishing videos? When we talk about like one month, how many videos did you publish your first month? I, I literally started out at three videos a week and we did that for probably the first three and a half, maybe four years. Now we're doing two videos a week with a live, two videos plus a live stream. We were doing three videos plus a live stream. So we've kind of shifted that around and we've kind of watched the algorithm and watched the numbers. We're talking about tweaking it, uh, changing it again, but I've already started another YouTube channel where I'm talking to all trades people, not just plumbers. Uh, so it's, it's a whole new role. We're learning new things and, and trying different things. You said live videos. Can you explain that? Like what is the benefit to doing live videos? Is there a reason why people want to do those? I think live videos are, are huge because it's great for helping you build your community. Uh, look, look at you going live right now. People can come <laughs> in and ask questions. So yeah. I, I think that's phenomenal. And I started posting videos on YouTube and then I got a call from LinkedIn. They said, Hey, uh, I was doing videos there too. And they, they reached out to me through email and said, we, would you like to do live stream? And I said, well, number one, LinkedIn doesn't do live stream. They said, well, we're fixing to, and we want you to be one of the beta testers. So I was one of the first 12 people in the world doing live video on LinkedIn. And it was so good that we, we literally started saying, look, we can do this on YouTube too, and we can make this even longer. And we started and just started having fun. So, so your live streams, like, what are you doing? You're obviously not like fixing a toilet live. Like what, what kind of stuff are you doing, um, on those videos? A, a lot of it's Q and a, uh, okay. what we, we've really, we've kind of morphed into a variety show. Uh, what we did now, we just moved out here to Wiley. We, we did have studios over in Richardson. So we're still building a lot of things, but I would literally start out in the studio for the first 30 minutes, greet the people, uh, we've had as many as three, 400 viewers at one time. Uh, we probably average around 75 to a hundred and I'd get in there and greet them for the first 30 minutes. Then I would walk out of the studio and go out into the shop and have a guest there, introduce them, talk about them a little bit, let them talk for a little bit. I'd go fire up the grill and we'd cook out. Then I'd come back and open the safe. We called it sipping Saturdays. I've got a huge browning gun safe full of bourbon and tequila. <laughs> so we'd open that up and make drinks and have sipping Saturday. And You're doing this live. Yeah, yeah, all of it's live. And just, man, I used to be a bartender. I, I love to cook. So it's like, you know, things are going to happen, though. It, it, you, you make mistakes. You spill something. You drop something. It, it is what it is. You just go with it. I was gonna say, I feel like we missed out here. I don't have any bourbon. I've got coffee, but you know, that's uh, well, and I've it. got green tea, so we're good. <laughs> All right. Um, so for for people starting out, I I personally like found it really daunting. Like I've heard it takes a lot of effort to get to like a thousand. Can we talk like timelines? Like getting to that first thousand, it, you know, how how long did that take you? And then I've heard again that once you hit 10 or, or 20 or 30 or whatever, that it becomes easier. And like you mentioned, you exploded and going from hundred to two hundred seems like really quickly. So how, how is that first part? Like, did it take a lot of effort to get to that first thousand? It, it does. But by, by the end of the year, uh, 
Well, put it this way. I, I went to that conference in the very beginning of, of March. We put our first videos up the beginning of April. By the first week of October, we had 117 subscribers. And there's a story behind it. So that's why I remember by the end of the year. Now at that conference that I was at in October to the end of the year, I hired a coach mm. and he actually started working us with us in November and December. By the end of the year, I think we hit 350 subscribers. And by the end of the next year, I think we were closer to 5,000. Wow. So it, it, it did pretty good then. So obviously there's a benefit to having a coach. Uh, we've, we've used a coach here. Can you talk a bit about that? Like where do people find good coaches? Cause I got to tell you, there's a lot of people out there claiming to be YouTube coaches and I'm a little skeptical. Like where do you find the good ones? You know, and, and I like the way you said that joy, because I, I go to, I go, I go to every social media conference that I can. And I see people coaching that I'm like, wait, I remember last year when you just started doing YouTube, <laughs> now you're a coach. You don't even have a thousand subscribers, but you are a YouTube guru and you know everything. And, and it just, it, it blows my mind, but I think the best ones, you, you know, look, look at the people that have done well and done it for a long time. I, I look at Jeremy vest is, is, was the very first YouTube coach that I had. He helped start and build vidIQ. Uh, he, he, he knows YouTube. Uh, Sean Cannell is, is one of the next ones that I studied under and, and then Daryl Eves. And I think to me, those are, those are the three people. And, and to be honest, uh, I don't even think Jeremy's coaching anymore, but Daryl Eves has channel jumpstart, which is phenomenal. Uh, I'm still in it. I'm in the mastery part of it, but this is one thing too, that I look at this. I never want to stop learning. I never want to stop getting better. And I think that if you walk in with that mindset, it's, it's going to, it's going to help you out a lot. For sure. Now I do want to also mention to our audiences listening, like feel free to put your questions in here. I've got a long list of questions still to ask Roger, but I will table my stuff and try and get your questions in there first. Uh, let's talk about, uh, you know, there's lots of different platforms for video these days, right? So mm -hmm. YouTube is clearly a monster, but then there's TikTok, and TikTok is like exploding. I mean, uh, especially with the younger generation, right? So when you're creating videos, do you create the same video for both YouTube and TikTok, or do you do different videos? Like is your strategy for those two platforms different? And if so, how? Is it number one is completely different. Okay. Uh, you, YouTube to me is long form content. We want an eight to 10 minute video that, that literally teaches somebody something that, that gives them value, that, that gives them great information. Now in that we may pull sound clips or we, we may know, Hey, this is a crazy part. It may be okay. Make sure you watch this. Cause man, this part can get crazy. Well, that may be put in for a clip to pull out for TikTok to point back to the video, to do things like that. So yeah, we, we look at each platform as its own entity. Mm -hmm. Now don't get me wrong with, with, with reels, with shorts, with, with everything out there, we'll repurpose a lot of that. And we try to pull it all out of long form content. So your, your YouTube shorts, for example, would be the, theoretically the same videos that you would use on TikTok then? It can be not always, but, but yes, well, it, 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 it depends on what we're doing with it. Uh, a lot of times you can look at a video or a short put out and say, okay, this probably wouldn't do very well on TikTok. But then again, we've done stuff like that and it's exploded. So, hmm. you know, it's, it's tough to say. One thing I'll tell people is try anything. Don't be afraid to just try something to, to see what'll work, but then go back and look at the numbers, look at the analytics and study it, know what your KPIs are that you're looking for and say, how, how do we do better next time? Sure. And as far as one other thing, I, I don't know if you've got into or not, but I've heard again from people on TikTok that like, you know, influencers are huge, getting people to talk about your product and like paying social media influencers. Have you ever dabbled in that arena at all? Like having other people promote you and man, they're expensive. <laughs> I, I haven't got them to promote me. So okay. that's really funny because I've had people ask me, do you run YouTube ads? Do you run TikTok ads? I've never paid for ads. Everything I do is organic. So, I mean, not at all. Now I've got sponsors though. 
once I hit 10,000 subs, we started reaching out for sponsors where we're the ones talking about all the other people. And mm -hmm. that's good. How do you fit sponsors in? Like I've seen again, some epi like shows, they will actually be like, no, it's time to hear from our sponsors. And like, you know, or do you just fit them into like the topic of the video? I try to fit them into the topic of the video. If, if I'm doing, if I'm doing a sponsor for this pen, it may be like, man, I love this pen. Oh, by the way, this video is sponsored by it, but, but mm -hmm. look what all I can do with this pen. You know, I do my estimates with it, my quotes with it, uh, send my thank you letters with it and, <laughs> you know, you know, talk about the product. We're doing one right now that we're in the middle of that. It's a sewer camera, a sewer hydro jetter, uh, things like that. So, and it's stuff plumbers use every day. So those are easy videos for me to do. And how do you, that's a good question with sponsors. Like, how do you figure out what to charge a sponsor? Is there like guides anywhere for that on like, you know, there's, pricing models? There's really not. I okay. hate to say it. Uh, I, I looked at a couple of my coaches, talked to them, looked at what they were doing. And since I consider myself a unicorn, there's not a lot of plumbers out there that are doing what I do the way I do. Uh, I pretty much doubled what they were asking for, put, to, put together a sponsor package, sent it out. The very first sponsorship deal I sent out, and I hope you're setting down, I asked for $720,000 a year. Whoa. And, and you got it? We, I got over half. Okay. And, and your them. list of sponsors, are these just companies that you used in your everyday work life? And you were just like, you had a list of them and you're like, oh, I use these all the time. I'm going to see if they want to sponsor my channel. You bet. I, I reach out continuously, especially as we're, I, I look at my channel now, especially my live stream is more of a variety show. Hmm. Uh, we, we grew our business by specializing in slab leaks, leak detection, whole house water filtration systems. So those were great people for me to reach out to. Well, I ended up acquiring a leak detection company that, that manufactures the equipment. So now it's like, okay, we should talk about that every video. <laughs> uh, my first sponsor, my, my biggest sponsor, uh, well, biggest one, the first couple of years was one of the biggest plumbing supply companies in the nation. And it just made sense. Look, I've got plumbers watching me and homeowners watching me that need plumbing product. Yeah. Well, yeah, no, I mean, it makes sense. And, and getting to 10,000, like if that's the only real benchmark you need to do, I feel like that's doable. Like a lot of people could get there. Um, I've seen, that. I've seen people do sponsors with smaller, with, with people no. with a thousand, with, with a thousand followers. I've seen them have sponsored videos. Interesting. All right. Noted. <laughs> uh, we got a couple of questions. I'm going to go to some of our audience questions here. So Nikki has a question. She wants to talk about editing. Uh, editing seems to be the biggest challenge. Do you have suggestions for finding an economical video editor? There's companies out there that will do it, uh, that, that aren't very expensive, you know, five, $600 a month. They'll edit four, eight videos a month. AI is getting to be a big deal. Mm. Start looking at AI. Uh, I'm in a mastermind and one of the guys I had told about a product that I was using to edit podcasts, he literally, he's like, Roger, this has saved me eight hours per podcast by using this video editor, the, this online editor software. And it's like, it works. He said, Roger, it just literally saves me so much time now. Now we can go in and do better things. Hmm. And like, can you name any places you mentioned? There's some, some places where they can edit videos for you. Any, any specifics that they could check out? Yeah, there, there, there's vid Husky. There's vid chops. Those are two companies that literally that that's what they do. They, it's an online service. You sign up, they've got editors, you know, over in the Philippines or something that you upload your, your raw data, they'll work on it and you get to go through and recut it. Tell them, change this, change that. Awesome. Oh, we have another question from Jerem. What's the best way to use tags and optimize them for each video? You know, I really don't like tags unless it's my tags. And the reason being YouTube wants one, actually every social media platform wants one thing from you. Keep people on that platform. <laughs> if I put in tags, I'm telling YouTube, Hey, I'm sending these people somewhere else. And I've just got it back deep in my mind somewhere that YouTube doesn't like that. So it's like, you know what? I, I'm not going to do it now. If it's my tag, 
that goes to either my product or a service I'm selling or a course I'm selling or anything at all like that, then, okay, that makes sense because it's going to come back to me anyway. Sure. All right. We have a, a question here from Justin. He's got two markets, uh, one consumers and two other professionals for consulting. When you start a YouTube new YouTube channel, or sorry, should you start a new YouTube channel for the consulting content? Yes. Uh, Justin, what, what, here, here's why I say that. When I started my YouTube channel, it was Texas Grain Plumbing. I was trying to grow a plumbing company. Then after a while, I realized, look, I've got more plumbers watching me than <laughs> just homeowners. So we started creating content for the plumbers since that was our audience. Then we realized we were getting other tradespeople, still predominantly plumbers, and the conversation was predominantly plumbing. Actually, the conversation's always plumbing. <laughs> so we really changed it to uh, the expert plumber to go plumbing. But when we realized there were other trades, we looked at our numbers and analytics and everything, and it told us that Roger Wakefield was the biggest search term. So we just changed it to Roger Wakefield. But now, I'm trying to talk to a lot of the other trades. And so we started a podcast and a whole new channel called the trade talks. So it gives us a completely different venue. Got it. And there was a follow-up question just to clarify on the tags thing. Are we talking about links or tags and maybe the, just clarify what the difference is? Well, well a tag is going to, a tag is going to send somebody somewhere. Now, if you mean that the, the the tags in the description, not ha I'm thinking, I guess I'm thinking hashtag. If, if it's just the tags, a lot of YouTube coaches will tell you, look, they, they don't mean anything anymore. But my thing is they mean something or YouTube wouldn't have them in there. Hmm. The day they take them out, then I'm not going to worry about them. But sure. as long as they have them in there, Justin, yeah. Uh, and, and thank you for clarifying that. I, my mind went straight to hashtags. Yeah. Uh, I love the tags. I want my videos to be found. And then I use tools like TubeBuddy and vidIQ to help make sure that I'm ranking for the tags that I want to be ranking for. Great. Uh, we have a question from Ranking Academy. Do you film your videos with different devices so they can be cut in the right format? We do. But to be honest, I try to shoot everything with cameras and shoot horizontal knowing that we can crop that down, knowing that we can go through and cut stuff out of there. I don't necessarily like, Hey, shoot this way. Now do it again this way. It's like, you know what, let's shoot it once. And my editors can come in and cut it and make it, make it work. Makes sense. That's, that's how we do it too. Um, about content, Chris had a question uh, about how far out you plan content. Like I've seen, you know, very robust uh, content calendars. What does yours look like? Oh my gosh. Uh, I was looking for a piece of paper that said earlier, we, we just lined up a hundred videos for one of the next projects we're doing. Uh, we try to stay ahead, but we also want to understand, you know, if there's a, a water tower that busted in Wiley, Texas today, and it flooded something, we want to be able to, to jump in quick and make a video and talk about it. Yeah, no, that that's really important. I think keeping on top of like, ongoing trends. It's definitely something we've heard from, from Jeremy. Uh, so the coach you mentioned, we've, you we've hired him as well. Um, so uh, I've got a question here from Noah. How much of a difference does writing a video description make as opposed to not writing a description? And do you find this has any impact on like SEO, for example? You, you know, Noah, I'm going to give you a big trick here. Number one, I think descriptions are huge. Uh, I was taught by, I believe, Sean Cannell about breaking down your description where you've got this part, top part is your video description. The next part is your, like your bucket description. The next part is like your channel description. That way you can, every video on your channel is going to have the same channel. Every one in the same buckets are going to have the same bucket, but each video will have its own different three, 400 word description at the beginning. And I think they're huge. I think that your title needs to be the first sentence of your description. And there for the longest, when we were growing and trying to hijack the word plumbing, it was literally one of the first two or three words that I said in every video I did. Interesting. So you actually made sure like when you were scripting that you said the word plumbing, so it would show up in your transcript. Yeah, I, because yeah, because I mean, Google's crawling the, the video, they're crawling the audio, they're crawling the description, they're crawling the title. I want 
whatever title I've got, I want it to fit all the way through there. And me wanting to own the word plumbing so bad, I made sure it was part of every video. And I think I did that for like the first two years. Wow. That's a solid tip for the record. I, that's not something I've actually heard yet. So that's uh that's interesting. I won't tell um, that to everybody, Joy. Yeah, no, sh keep that a secret. Yeah, sh <laughs> no, don't tell Joy, don't tell anybody. Don't tell anybody. All right. Um, and then Leah wanted to know, you talked about that conference. Um, and I'll add to her question. She wants to know what conference that was, but I would also love to know like what social media conferences, because you said you've been to a few. Are there any in particular like people are really looking to learn about this stuff, ones that they should make sure they attend? Absolutely. I'm repetitious. Uh, the very first competition or very first conference that I went to social media marketing world, Michael Selzer, mm. phenomenal. Uh, he puts on an amazing conference and the good thing about it is it's all social platforms, not just YouTube. Mm. It, it helps a lot. And he brings in some of the top experts in every industry. So you learn new things about a lot of different things. The next one that used to also, well, social media marketing world is in San Diego. Vid Summit used to be in LA. It's in Dallas this year in a couple of weeks, October 3rd, 4th, and 5th. And that's Daryl Eve's conference. That's where I met Jeremy the first time. And it, man, it just, it blows my mind how much you can learn at these conferences. Those are two that I go to every year and I try to take my team to every year. That's awesome. So I told you I want to come back to the concept of ad revenue because obviously you, YouTube is like, and correct me if I'm wrong here, they're kind of unique there. Like not a lot of platforms actually pay uh, the people that give the content. And I, I love that about YouTube. Like I know there's talks about Twitter possibly doing that and that would be great, um, you know, if, if they get on board with that. But can we talk about like how much should a business expect to make? I'd love to hear numbers if you're willing to share them. Like you know, at, at this stage, when we were at 10,000 subscribers, we were making this. And once we hit a hundred, cause I know that numbers, you said they don't really matter, but they do matter when it comes to ad revenue, right? Your, your views matter. That's what your you get matter. paid for. You, you can have a billion subscribers. If nobody's watching your video, you're, you're not making any money. You can have one subscriber. If everybody in the world is watching your video, you're going to make money. <laughs> so that's, that's the big thing to remember there. But Thank you, Chris. I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, but the, the, the neat thing about it is I, we've had great months and it, it was really when we exploded and w our average month, I'll put it this way, is probably six to 10 grand. Uh, and that's just ad revenue, ad sense. Our best month has been about 40 grand. Oh, wow. So you can... You know, business owners that say, I don't have time for this between ad revenue, between sponsorships, between all the different things we're doing, uh, you can afford to build a team to where you do have time for it. Yeah. So interesting. So obviously YouTube, let's say you're, you're getting 10 grand a month. Now you compare that to TikTok. If you're investing, you know, just as much time into TikTok as YouTube, how do you justify that? When you, you there's no it? way you can't justify it. It, you can't it justify makes it. no sense whatsoever. Okay. And <laughs> even Mr. B said that he said, look, he said, I don't even know why we make TikTok videos. We get more <laughs> views there. We just don't make any money there. Right. Yeah. And, and you don't. I guess there's the hope that maybe they'll, they'll do that at some point, like actually, you know, put in an ad revenue model, maybe. They keep <laughs> talking about it. If, if they would replicate TikTok's ad revenue model that they do great, everybody mm -hmm. would, because the, the short form content, man, is fun to make. It really is. And there's a lot of times that we'll come up with an idea that's not good for a long form video. And we'll jump in and say, Hey, let, let's do, let's do a short and, or just, Hey, let's do this real quick. Five steps, do step one. Okay, stop, let's move the camera. Do step two, do step three. And we'll put together a short video and it'll come out really, really good. And we'll spend a lot of time doing it, a lot of time editing, but Joy, we, we don't get any money for it. Well, at least you get the YouTube shorts, right? I mean, yeah. Yeah, it gives us something to put over there. Yeah, no, I hear you. Okay, and so so that's your now numbers. When you were back at like, you know, 10,000 subscribers, and I, I keep saying subscribers, but like, I don't know what the, the view metric would be, but right. like how much were you making then? Like, was it, it you know, in, in the beginning it, it started out slow, but once we started growing, it got up there pretty quick. I mean, I remember months where we'd get a thousand or two thousand dollars. I'm like, man, we hit it. We're jackpot. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, it almost paid one person's payroll this week. <laughs> uh, so, you know, you get excited about stuff like that, yeah. but 
to, to be honest, man, guys, you can make whatever you want to make on here. I'm, I know 17 year old kids making 15 grand a month on YouTube. Hmm. So the ad revenues there, you've just got to figure out how to get the eyeballs, get the views, and that's going to help your ad revenue. Then you got to figure out what product could you be talking about that that company may be like, man, we'd really like for you to be talking about our product to your viewers. Right now, between all our social platforms, we're probably generating 10 million views a month. It adds up quick. Yeah. And I mean, just make sure guys, you asked for 700 K. I mean, that's, that's where you, you gotta be right. <laughs> when you well, get those sponsors, I've got broad shoulders and, and a big rear end. So it's easy for me to walk in. And yeah. Do that. I don't even know if I could do that. I don't know. I'll try. I'll let I, you know. I, I'll um, tell you what's funny is uh, joy. I, I got hired a management company after that, that now helps me with my contracts, helps negotiate them, do all that. But I sent this first contract over to them and said, Hey, uh, I just need y'all to look at this. Tell me what you think. And they said, Roger, they're never going to go for this. I said, what do you mean? <laughs> I said, number one, it's way too much money. It, it's way too much this. It's way too much that. And I'm like, well, number one, they've already approved it. And they kept saying, we're going to change this. We're going to change it because they're, they're not going to approve this. It's like, no, y'all don't understand. It's already approved. And man, I, I, I see the value in what we do. Uh, and it's funny because, Joy, I have trades people reach out all the time and say, look, I'm doing social media, but I'm not making money. And I'm like, why not? And they don't know how. And that's what I love sitting down and talking to people out and brainstorming. And, and they're like, how, how did you ask for this much money? <laughs> well, easy. I put this together and sent it to them and it looked very professional. And you know, one, one thing I was talking to other plumbers at the time and I'm like, look, quit cussing when you're on YouTube. Hmm. And they're like, man, that's just me. It's like, okay, you're not very Gary V. You're not going to be able to get by with it like that. And they've reached out to me later saying, Hey man, I wish I'd have listened to you because nobody wants to sponsor my videos. Interesting. And I'm like, I'm sorry. And, and you just, you're, you're doing consulting now with like other businesses, right? Is that, is that one of your things that you're doing? It's, Tell I'm, us about that. I'm, well, I'm building an app uh, right now. I'm building an app to help recruit people into the trades. I understand in the trades, look, what we've been telling kids forever. If you don't go to college, you're not going to mount to anything. Hmm. And, and I hate hearing that because I know tradespeople that make two, $300,000 a year and you can make as much money as you want in the trades. So I'm putting together four courses and an app and, and all kinds of things. But now I'm also teaching businesses how to do social media. I'm teaching individuals how to grow on YouTube, how to, how to do what I did because I don't look at it as marketing and advertising. I look at it. I, I'm in the human to human business. I want to help humans learn how to fix their plumbing, how to grow their businesses. And, and I tell them it's, it's how to make your phone ring. Cause as a business owner, the biggest part, whenever I told you we spent $47,000 and the phone stopped ringing, I remember talking to marketing people and I kept thinking, look, I just need you to tell me you can make the phone ring. That's all I need to hear. And they don't get that. They're like, well, we're going to get you this. We're going to a uh, hundred of these, a hundred of these, a thousand of these and all this. I, I need one thing. I need to make my phone ring. Can you do that? And at the end of the day, when you're a residential service company provider and you've got seven, eight, 10 guys that their families are depending on you to feed them, you want one thing to happen. You want that phone to ring. And at the end of the day, any marketing person needs to understand that because that's what it's all about. Yeah. I feel like you're preaching to the choir here. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Um, we had a question from Colin earlier about thumbnails, which I don't think we really talked about a, a ton, but thumbnails, I, you know, are a thing I hear are, are really important when it comes to helping your videos perform better. Um, so can you talk a bit about thumbnails? Like I, for example, when we were first starting making videos, I, I kept hearing like, Oh, you got to open your mouth. You got to like make these crazy faces. And I'm like, yeah, exactly. And I'm I was like, Oh my it. God, like in order to do this and be successful, do you have to be willing to make a fool of yourself? Like, yeah, let me share, share your thoughts. You know, you don't have to, but but here's what's the, and, and you've had Jeremy. Jeremy is the greatest thumbnail coach I've ever known. Okay. Jeremy understands it. He understands the, the eyes and the connection and everything you're trying to do. So I do. Uh, and look, I love Jeremy Vest. Phenomenal person. We cheated a little bit. We went down and bought, you know, at Easter, they, they've got 
all, and you can find them online. It shows you all the little different faces that you can put on your Easter eggs, sad, excitement, joy, surprise. And now we tape that up inside the white box and say, Roger, get in there and make those faces. <laughs> and we make those faces because your face needs to tell a message. It needs to tell a story. This video is going to surprise you. This video is going to break your heart. This video is going to make you happy. And you make those faces. It's not just you're making faces to make faces. That face better be telling a story. And your thumbnail, and it's the stop sign. When people are scrolling, and think about how little the, the thumbnails are when they're scrolling through YouTube, that little bitty thumbnail needs to say a lot. And it needs to make people want to stop and look at it. So that's where thumbnails are amazing. Can't wait for this photo shoot that I'm probably going to be forced to have now with all these faces. Yeah, just right? get get online, go go make all the faces. <laughs> and matter of fact, you can just watch my thumbnails and say, okay, I'm going to make all these faces that Roger does. Oh goodness, we have a we have a a question here from Matthew. I've been seeing a lot of videos about faceless YouTube channels because you can do it with AI. Do you think this is just hype or is this a legitimate video content gold rush? I think if you get in on it now, it can be it can be amazing. Uh, there used to be, there, there, there still is, uh, a YouTube channel about plumbing that the guy never shows his face. He just talks. You see his hands, you see his hands, uh, great videos. I mean, he does good work. I don't like it as much because I like the human connection. I love the fact that when I walk in a skills USA competition, high school kids walk up and girl crush on me. And I mean, you see these big grown guys that are plumbing and they're like oh my god you're roger wakefield and i'm like dude you know i'm just a plumber right <laughs> and that's all that's all i am so so relax and have fun and let's talk but I, I love that because i have connected with people all around the world and it's not just influence it's impact you, you impact people's lives hmm. and when you walk up and you see people or, or they hand you a card and they say, you know, here's my business card. When I first met you, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I didn't know what to do. Now I'm a plumber and that's my card. And I owe that to you. It, it'll, it'll touch you. Hmm. Pretty neat stuff. So we had, we had a few other questions that came in um, from social media earlier. Um, one of them talks about your content process. Like, can you walk us through, like, how in the world do you come up with topics? Is it just the questions you were being asked by customers on a regular basis? Or do you have, like, a, a process for that? It, it's both. We started with the, the questions. Enjoy thinking about that. You could go to whoever answers the phone for your company and say, what questions are you asked every day, every week, whatever it is. Now imagine that, imagine that you've taken those questions and you've made a video to answer it. Now the people at the front desk can say, Hey, you know what? Hmm. I'd have to go into a lot of depth to give you the, the real answer for all this. But if you'll go to Roger's YouTube channel, I'm gonna, I can text you the link or email you the link. We've got a video where he answers that question and you actually get to hear it from Roger. Well, that does two things. It lets me talk to them directly through a video face to face looking at the camera it also lets them listen to me and understand why i do what we do and now the other thing it does is that feeds people to my youtube channel hmm. so i'm getting the views is it scary though to hang up the phone i mean like what if you just lost that lead and they don't call back is that oh, risky? you can be smart and make sure you get their name and number and email address and everything and call them back about four hours later say hey just following up joy uh i know that you said that you had a slab leak uh were you able to watch the roger the video that roger did yeah yeah i did but i still don't understand it okay what 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 now now you've got conversation you get to become somebody's trusted advisor yeah that's uh that's very important right so don't forget that key step you don't want to just send people away which i've yeah. written you know who answered your phone i feel like a lot of business owners don't put enough thought into those hires because i have heard lots of our clients have front desk people that really turn away customers i think that's that's a really critical role 
I used to love my plumbing company because where my office was, I could hear the front desk people. Mm -hmm. Amber was amazing. But if Amber ever said anything wrong, it was easy to catch it because I'm there and I'm listening and I could walk out and say, Hey, let me explain this to you. Or, or let me have you watch this video. Cause I want you to understand. Cause the way you worded that wasn't really right. Or the way you worded that could have been better. And I mean, I'm telling you, you can call and talk plumbing with Amber now and she can talk plumbing with you. She's like, look, I've seen the videos. I've answered the questions. Uh, I've got it. Yeah. Well, that's amazing. That's the type of front end person you definitely want. Mm -hmm. um so as far as you shooting a lot of the videos i mean obviously you're the face of of this do you do all of it yourself if people are looking to start you know grow a channel is it is it important to have like one or a few people that are like the face of the brand and like if you're those people how do you avoid burnout like how do you constantly be recording all the time and, and talking and have that excitement that's so necessary on youtube you know it man it, 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 that one's a hard one to answer uh i am the face Hmm. Uh, it, it's not always easy. I literally, before I talked to you, I was in the studio next door for an hour and a half hmm. shooting continuously shot 30 videos in an hour and a half, three minute videos for the app. But I mean, to stand in there and shoot one video after another and each one, good morning today. I want to <laughs> tell you about this and <laughs> you see how easy that is for me now. I understand I've got to turn my volume up. I've got to turn my energy level up. And it's funny because when we come in here on Saturday mornings, we do a podcast right here in my office. You can see the microphone back there over my shoulder. Then we'll walk out and go into the room next door. And it's like, oh my God, I got a great idea for a video. And a podcast is talking just like we are. But when we get in there, all of a sudden it's like, you ready? Like, yeah. So you sure? Yeah. Okay. You said you're going to do $1 billion in <laughs> revenue this year, but you don't start out with that mindset. You start out with what are the three things I need to know to make a million dollars. And you, you, you've got that very beginning of the video, get the hook, get them, get them to say, Oh my gosh, I want to hear more about this. Yeah. And your energy level better be there. <laughs> Yeah. And that's, and is, is there, I mean, there was a, a comment here from TubeBuddy talking about, you know, it helps to have a face like yours and and not all of us were born with that face too. Like, I mean, as far as, you know, creating a YouTube personality, is there, is there anything you found that like is really necessary from either like a physical or a personality standpoint that you just need to have to be successful? Well, well I'll tell you what, and, and number one, look, I, I love TubeBuddy and th thank y'all for putting that in there. I think that's amazing. <laughs> but, but remember before I did YouTube, this was just a plumber's face. <laughs> Nobody said, oh my God, you've got the most amazing face. Matter of fact, people would tell me you've got a face for radio. Okay. So this was not, I mean, this is just me. We've all got what we've got to work with. And, and man, I, I try to tell people this all the time. You can do one thing I can't do. You can be you. Anything else you do, I can try to do. Anything else I do, you can try to do. But getting the right tools. To buddy, Jeremy, Daryl, Channel Jumpstart, whatever it is. If you want to grow a mustache, grow a mustache, but understand I've got people that talk on me, talk about me, and bring me up on their presentation in these social media conferences around the United States. And they're bringing up saying, look, Roger can never shave his mustache because that's his brand, if you can't tell. Mm. And I can't, but it's like, luckily, I, I love it. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure you probably just got a bunch of subscribers, but who knows? You probably won't even notice because you'll have, you know, 5,000 more. I love it. Time. It's a great thing. Thank you very much. I do appreciate that, Andy. So, so we're going to, we're going to wrap up here. So I want to just say any, any final thoughts or the things I've, I didn't ask you that you feel like, you know, the audience just needs to know um, before we wrap up here. Yeah. And, and it's what I love about what you're doing, Joy. It, it, it's SEO. It is Guys, if, if you weren't here in the very beginning and you jumped in a while ago or something, literally go to YouTube and search plumbing. <laughs> okay. And when you scroll down and I used to be able to tell people, look, I've got anywhere from <clears throat> six to 12 or 15 of the top 20 videos. That would be like having four to seven 
on page one of Google. Hmm. I've got four to seven placements on plumbing. Okay. I don't own Google. I wish I did. The money that social media can do for you, whether it's AdSense, whether, whether it's direct income, whether it is your business. I sold my plumbing company a year and a half ago because I started making more money on social media. So I turned around, I had to decide which way do I go? And I love doing what I do now. I love helping people learn to look at the camera, learn mm -hmm. to talk to the person watching the video. But the revenue that you can make, it, it makes it worth it. And, and I always tell people, look, it, you're not doing it for the money, but it takes money for us to live. We all know that. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, when you have people come up and say, hey, look, I've got a plumbing license now, and I've got that because of you. When you, you, you see women that say, look, Roger, I never thought I could do anything in the trades, but I watched your video, and, and I got in it, and oh, my God, I love this. When you realize that what we do, we've all got stories to tell. I, I speak at social media conferences. I speak at trade conferences. I speak at speaker conferences. How do you get on the stage and speak? And I teach people to do it now. Hmm. Guys, this, my life has completely changed. And yours can too. But the thing is, you can change it to whatever you want it to be. You've just got to get in and learn, learn the right tools, learn the right coaches, but love what you're doing. Because if you love it, you can talk about it each and every day with as much passion as I do, because it doesn't matter whether I'm talking plumbing, speaking, or social media. I, I love what I get to do. And I tell people I'm living the most amazing life I could have ever imagined. Hmm. That is the key, guys. You do have to love what you do. I could not talk about plumbing and be excited, but I love talking about SEO. So I, I get it. Um, before we, we leave here, just tell everybody how they can find you. Obviously, you know, we, we all know about your YouTube channel, but is there anything else that you're up to that, that people should be aware of? You know, we've got an app coming out. So I would say, you know, I, I do have a, my own webpage, Roger Wakefield. You can go check it out. Uh, we will be putting a link to the app in there whenever it comes out. And this is really neat because this is done by uh, the group behind Angel Studios who did The Chosen. And that's who's actually building my app for me. But the, the, the neat thing about it is we've got a lot of free stuff. Every, every video I shot this morning was for free. It's what I want to put in there to bring value to just to give people. And... If you reach out on LinkedIn, connect with me. LinkedIn, I normally do myself, but we're on LinkedIn. We're on TikTok. We're on YouTube. <laughs> we're everywhere. He's everywhere, guys. Everywhere. <laughs> He's everywhere a good, good plumber should be. Yeah, it's true. Well, uh, I just for those uh, that don't know, I heard about Roger from uh, one of our local U uh, conferences that we had earlier this year. So Jeremy Vest was one of our speakers. You were absolutely in his presentation, Roger, big face in there and talking about your YouTube channel. So that is how we got connected. I just want to make sure people know um, our next event is coming up uh, in less than a month, October 13th. Uh, we have the first ever local U in uh, Canada, which I'm very excited about because uh, it's in my backyard. And we're really excited. Um, hope to see a lot of people in person and there'll be a lot of great topics. We definitely do have a social media um, session, lots of sessions on SEO, but it's the perfect place to attend if you are a small business or local business and looking to grow your business. Um, so thank you so much for coming, Roger. We really appreciate your time. I'm going to have to watch this video at least three more times <laughs> to take all the notes since I wasn't able to do that being here, but I uh, appreciate it and, and have a great day, everyone. Joy, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure.